Uh, at the outset, uh, let me thank Dr. Somshil and Dr. Foglia for giving me this opportunity to speak to you in this platform. Uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I would be uh, speaking on uh, a few methods to deal with the posture astigmatism. Uh, if you look at a clear graft, it's a delightful sight for even any ophthalmic surgeon, more for a corneal surgeon. But quite often, these clear grafts hide a lot of uh, unwanted astigmatisms, which occurs in about 15 to 30 percentage of cases. Uh, there are uh, multiple factors that are involved in this. If you look at this uh, pre op factors, if you have a condition like this, when you have a corneal thinning in one side, like pellucid module degeneration, when you define this cornea, one, as you see here, uh, one side of the cornea is normal, while the other is much more thinner. So there is bound to be some astigmatism. A similar scenario occurs in a patient with keratoconus in whom uh, if you don't incorporate the base of the cone in the area of trephination, you can get undesirable astigmatism. Similar things operate in corneal scar uh, and other factors would be, uh, pre of factors would basically like taste and Among the in-drop factors, uh, small uh, and the trephination, as Madam was explaining, has to be perpendicular both on the graft as well as the host. And uh, quite often you see that there is a graft host under uh, override or an underride, which is pretty common, as uh, Sharon Bissosa was showing you. And uh, suturing plays a very major role. Uh, suturing multiple factors uh, come into that. The type of material that you use, the tightness that you have, the length of the bites that you take the intraocular pressure during surgery and the speculum pressure also. So, so many things can influence suturing. I mean, the post-op factors, if you have a loose suture, it can, early in the post-op period, it can lead to graftectasia and uh, so do rampant uh, steroid use. If you have to use steroid uh, a, for a longer period, uh, the graft junction would be structurally more weak. If you look at cornea, cornea can be envisaged as uh, about 250 to 300 lamellae stacked on top of each other, each lamellae made of a collection of fibrils, each fibril carrying about 70 microfibrils. And structurally, it is very different. The peripheral cornea is different from the uh, central cornea, and the anterior one third is very different from the posterior half. And to that, if you add this uh, a full thickness corneal scar, uh, all calculations can really go wrong. So most of the things that we do for the management of astigmatism in a virgin cornea does not apply in a graftose junction, past a graftose junction. In the interest of time, I'll go oh, to each one in uh, one by one. This is a patient who had a, uh, a 10 month post op visit had around 624 vision. On topography, we found that the patient has close to 15 types of, types of astigmatism. We just removed a few sutures on both sides and the astigmatism came down to 1.42 and the best character visual equity also improved. Another example in an interrupted uh, suturing patient who had 9.7 after suture removal, it came down to uh, significantly. The same patient, it's important to call the patient, don't prescribe class the same day, you have to call the patient at least after a week. So a lot of astigmatism reappeared. But it, uh, with further suture removal, it came down to 3.3, .3, and uh, the best corrective visual acuity improved to 20 by 20. So even though he has a multicolored central cornea, he has a good vision. With uh, continuous suturing, the things are more difficult. Uh, if you have a, a patient who has a astigmatism like this, you have to pull in sutures to loosen up the area where there is a steepening of the cornea. This is a video from Dr. Esquera, which uh, demonstrates the use of intra-op keratoscopy and uh, titration of the uh, sutures and its tightness. So you loosen up that area. And once it is loose in one area, you can pull it. And uh, that area, the area where there is the steepening, that can be loosened up. So this patient, after this procedure, uh, it, it uh, came down to a very small cylinder and the best corrective visual acuity also improved. The other way that we can deal with astigmatism is by using relaxing incisions, but uh, the liberal relaxing incisions obviously don't work. 
we have to uh, put it inside the graftose junction. That is the second limbus in a patient with a penetrating keratoplasty or a deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. It has to be at 75 to 85% depth. And we have to factor in coupling ratio also. So I'm not going into details, but HANA's nomogram is the one that is very commonly used for treating uh, post-keratoplasty astigmatism. Uh, this is a study in which they use the femtosec and arcuate uh, keratotomy for uh, dealing with this astigmatism. And they found that uh, from pre-op value of average 9.45, it came down to 4.64. And the depth in which the femtosecond laser cut was uh, very good. It was 10.5 uh, as an on average. So it is pretty safe and predictable. But if you see the mean best corrected visual acuity, there is hardly one line improvement. If you look at more closely at the graphs, you can see that the post of cells are distributed all over. There is a tendency for uh, overcorrection in low myopia, low astigmatism, and a tendency for undercorrection in high cylinders. A similar uh, systematic review that is the American Academy to come with a new nomogram for the light under correction. So the best results are seen in people with moderate astigmatism. Uh, what about this? This is a patient who had a horizontal flat axis and had uh, two loose switches in the early post op period. So the, he already has a flat axis, horizontal axis. On top of that, he has a graft ectasia. So it makes sense to do uh, wedge resection plus compression sutures, and obviously uh, put sutures over the area of ectasia. So this will correct, will much, bring much more symmetry to the cornea. We have to understand the amount of steepening that it causes is much more and has to be careful. Uh, the results are also quite encouraging. Uh, I don't have a, too much of a personal experience. I've done maybe four or five cases. But the results would be, I would best would be modest. And there is a tendency for the results to be in over a period of time. LASIK is a very popular refractive surgical procedure. This can be considered in uh, patients with post PK astigmatism also, but you do that only after three to six months of suture removal. And because you cut uh, horizontally across the graftose junction, there will be some change in the corneal biomechanics. And so people advocate first flap cut and later, six weeks later, do the explanation. Long term results again, uh, it's not very great. Uh, the, there is definitely improvement for the especially for uh, the low. Stigmatism, the results are less promising. Very unlike what we see in May. It uh, is a very uh, useful procedure. The advantage is that you don't need flap here and there are no flap related complications. Uh, but again, the results are much better in spherical uh, powers than low to medium powers. Topo can uh, uh, like uh, you have in this one minute, the other in which if you have symmetrical astigmatism, like if it's a patient with symmetrical astigmatism, like you can do fakey but if it's symmetric, it's a good choice. Uh, 